Hello everyone, welcome back to our videos and in this case to this one, part of this series dedicated to Wi-Fi 7. As promised, a few weeks ago, we were gonna be back, as we were not so happy with the results that we had with the adapter that we installed and tested thoroughly in that opportunity. Well, guess what? Finally, I think that you'll be very happy enjoying out-of-the-box experiences that are gonna blow your mind. Before we continue, is Wi-Fi 6 still an option? Of course, let's remember that Wi-Fi 6 takes us close to gigabit Ethernet, but over Wi-Fi. In this second video, we're gonna keep using this access point from Omata, the EAP773, but with one big difference, or even two differences that may be very important. First, it is gonna have the most recent firmware that addresses many issues that the access point had at the beginning. As we said last time, it is very wise to wait some time until hardware and software have evolved and can give you a reliable performance, as well as getting the most out of the hardware. And the second big difference that we're gonna be having today is that we're gonna be using a feature called MLO or multi-link operation. Let me show you. After having upgraded this access point to the latest firmware, again, we didn't touch any of the settings that you can tweak from the Omata controller and a little parenthesis right here. The idea with our videos is to share with you the experience that you're gonna have with the hardware right out of the box. So basically what we had was the default settings for the access point. But today we're gonna be activating the only feature that may make a huge difference between Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 7 and that is multi-link operation, of which you can find a lot of literature online. Basically what it is, is that it is gonna let the access point and client use simultaneous Wi-Fi bands. With this in mind, and also considering that as well as Wi-Fi 6E, it works in the six gigahertz spectrum, Wi-Fi 7 may have what you have been waiting for. We already know for the test that we performed that we were getting very interesting speed tests last time with our Wi-Fi 7 adapter, of which we were not so happy with the results as there were few things that were missing. Like for example, not having the best performance over Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 4, and was actually kind of slow when connecting to such access points for which we used several models. We invite you to watch that video that is linked to this one and we leave the links in the description. We're also going to be using this MSI Wi-Fi 7 adapter that you can either install in your PC using its pre-built PCI Express interface or you can disassemble it and use it directly connected to your laptop in a key E M.2 Wi-Fi slot. We're going to pose a very poor scenario for it as we did with our PCI Express NVMe adapter and it's going to be that we're going to install it in a 12 year old PC running in a third generation Core i7 processor. Very interesting. We're also going to involve Wi-Fi 7 capable mobile clients such as the Galaxy S24 Ultra, which by the way, I invite you to watch our video of why this fantastic phone pulled me back to Android and particularly Samsung. And finally, the access point that we're going to be using today for our tests, like I said a few moments ago, is the EAP773 access point, a fantastic access point by the way, that we have continuously recommended with all the characteristics that we may need uh, such as tri-band, uh, 10 gigabit per second uplink, which by the way, as you are about to see, is very important for today's tests. And the feature that we just mentioned for Wi-Fi 7 multi-link operation. We are not going to be activating OFDMA or frequency division multiple access designed also to improve performance over Wi-Fi. So right to these new tests, a few aspects that caught our attention. With the BE200 adapter, we made all the tests again with many results that are not going to be worth your time being mentioned in today's video. We did not like it, at least in that system. More tests of that particular adapter in other computers in upcoming videos. The reason is to see if that has anything to do with it and most importantly, what many followers have claimed that the antenna has to be specifically designed for Wi-Fi 7, which literature does not support, but is something that we feel compelled to test. We're gonna do that in future videos. We may even install it in PCI Express adapter like the one this MSI Herald BE uses. Okay, so then we proceeded with the tests of this second adapter, the MSI Herald 685, and results were fantastic. Not only because Wi-Fi 7 speeds were phenomenal, but also because they were very stable, and it gave us also very consistent performance when connected to Wi-Fi 4, Wi-Fi 5, and Wi-Fi 6 access points. An outstanding adapter. Let's take a look at a file transfer of this MSI Herald, but connecting it to a Wi-Fi 6 access point. 
very interesting. High speed, of course, as many may note right here, uh, this is pretty much wired-like experience. Test after test, they were very consistent. You're gonna be able to transmit a 33GB file, or combination of huge files, in 9 minutes. Very good. In Wi-Fi 7, with no help at all from the AP, this MSI Wi-Fi 7 adapter transferred the same file in about 7 minutes. But link, as well as data transfer speeds, were very variable. Typical from Wi-Fi connections, you might say. So we went for a multi-link operation, we activated from the OMATA controller and excluded the 2.4 GHz band. We only allowed multi-linking of 5 and 6 GHz bands. These were the incredible speeds that we reached. And what we like the most, as you can see right here, is how even the performance and data transfer rate is. 2.1, 2.2 gigabit per second. So let's see the transfer speed of the file that we mentioned a moment ago. This one is the real life example that you should expect. Look for example how even and regular the data transfer speed is in this example. Very nice experience. And this is something that we had not seen over Wi-Fi. Or you may have had to be at a location where Wi-Fi spectrum is mostly free. And let's get real, that doesn't happen anymore. And the probability of having many adjacent access points is very high. It took a little over 3 minutes to transfer the same 32 gigabit file. What do you think about this? Leave it in the comments. For those of you who may be interested, this is the scenario that we had and this is the hardware that we used. We are transmitting in a network with a 10 gigabit per second aggregation switch from Unify in upcoming videos how to create a budget 10 gigabit per second network. So the server and the client are connected to such aggregation switch. And also let's remember that the client is not a high-end computer. As a matter of fact, it's a 12 year old computer and it just features a small upgrade to its SSD drives or storage, this NVMe to PCI Express adapter. Otherwise, its onboard and SATA drives would not have been able to handle such high transfer rates. As a point of comparison, this is what you should expect of these same tests using a wired gigabit Ethernet experience. Finally, Wi-Fi has surprised and by a big margin such connections. Please keep in mind that speed is severely affected when transmitting thousands of small files instead of big ones. Does not matter if it is wired or wireless connections. Mobile devices that can connect to a Wi-Fi 7 can make a somewhat inconsistent performance as sometimes they connect at a speed typical of Wi-Fi 6 adapters, but suddenly you may get an out of nowhere boost. And this is not something that had to do anything with the client convergence at any given moment as it was the only client connected to the access point. Still, very good performance and browsing through Wi-Fi 7 in such powerful mobile devices is remarkable. About how many clients can connect to an access point in Wi-Fi 7? That is something that has improved from Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 7. Wi-Fi 7 speeds today take us above the average internet access speeds in the United States. Wi-Fi 6E by far exceeds that limit and even does that and continues to be an excellent upgrade from Wi-Fi 5. We noticed that there is a still long road ahead to consider these connections completely full duplex. Take a look at this graph. But let's consider that we are not playing around for these tests with multiple access as we said at the beginning of this video. And the main reason is that many clients still may experience such access point feature as an inconvenient to connect to it. Ok guys, thanks for watching this video, remember that your huge support, subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. I hope that this video was as informative as it was intended. See you next time.